So corticobasal syndrome is a catch-all term. It's one of those, if you like, vague terms which we can lump medical conditions within. The fact of the matter is that corticobasal degeneration was the classic disease that was first described, but that was from post-mortem tissue where we could see abnormalities on the brain itself. But the clinical phenotype of those patients was a little bit like Parkinson's, but they typically presented with what was regarded a bit like an alien hand, so that the hand wouldn't do what they wanted it to do. It was clumsy, it wouldn't maybe use a knife and fork properly, and there were other features. Now, as we've come to see more of corticobasal syndrome, what we realize is that there are lots of diseases that can present like this. Diseases like Parkinson's disease, progressive supernuclear palsy, Alzheimer's disease can all have a corticobasal syndrome syndrome and unfortunately at the moment we don't have a way of teasing those things apart. Again unfortunately we don't have fantastic treatments for corticobasal syndrome so we have to rely on uh, supporting those patients as best we can dealing with the symptoms as they arise.